Everything crashed because my PC is old and busted. But it's okay. We don't care. We're back. We're going to keep going. We were talking about painting. Painting areas for houses. Houses not being something that you're placing. Much like you do not place roads in foundation, you don't place houses. And that's really fun for like trying to have the story you're telling about a place be you know not one that you're completely in control of so it's fun to see you know people build houses and then roads be built to those houses by the you know whims of what your little uh, villagers your little residents your little serfs uh, want to do i do like a little little note of this game that when you're uh, the lowest tier of citizen that you have is called a serf. Um, and then the next one up from that is commoner. And commoners, if you don't meet their needs, will leave, will go somewhere else. But serfs won't, which I like and is accurate because what being a serf means is that you are. What it means to be in serf is to be attached to the land and to be forbidden from leaving it. If you are a serf, you're not a slave in the sense that you are not put to work. Um, you are not put to work by means of force, but you are bound to the land that you uh, live on, and you are supposed to work that land. And even if you choose to not work that land, which is a choice that is maybe somewhat open to you in some ways as a serf, the choice that is not open to you is to leave. Anyway, that's a digression about serfs. Let's move on to a different town. Let's talk about uh, Broad Meadow. This is Broad Meadow. This is maybe the densest um, little settlement that I have, sort of village that uh, was built up here. And this is here because the first thing that was built was the town center of Stiffick Hill up here, this sort of old hill settlement, quote unquote. But then the other major, the sort of major geographical feature near here is this lake down here. So one of the first things I did after building a little settlement up here was place a fishing hut way down on the lake, way down here. And then this road is the walk that that first guy who went to go fish the lake took. Did I go the right way? Yeah, all the way from Stiffick Hill, all the way down along here. This was all, you know, woodland and empty wilderness then. Uh down to the lake and so sort of midway along that walk there's this little town here on the nice flat land near the lake there's a nice pub here this pub is called the angler's walk i think this was the first pub that i built in the game there's a really ugly <laughs> fountain here i'm not good at the um i said i like landscape architecture i'm not good at landscaping stuff in particularly well so this sort of like very overdone fountain is just sort of right here and it doesn't really mean anything. I was sort of built this out of misunderstanding of some of the uh, incentives in the game, I think, and I don't really like it. Anyway, what was I talking about? Yeah, so this is this is broad meadow, so called, because it was it was a broad meadow. Um, a lot of this used to a lot of this land used to be very heavily forested and has been progressively cut down as I've expanded uh, by my need for for lumber to build things with. Um, but this was initially clear land, so hence why this is called Broad Meadow. Um, and the dominant feature, obviously, of Broad Meadow over on the site here is uh, Our Lady of Temperance Monastery. Uh, the, did I not name the chapel here? No, I did name the chapel. Yes, this is the Chapel of St. Hanno, which is the sort of church. Um, but the monastery attached to it is called... Our Lady of Temperance uh, Monastery. Um, the game has sort of these three different progression paths. No, there's four different progression paths that you go through. There's the like all city everything progression path. Then there's the labor kingdom and clergy progression paths. And as I said, the game is in early access, so these aren't evenly developed. We'll talk a bit more later about the kingdom path. It's very underdeveloped. Um, the labor path is sort of mediumly developed. All the pub building stuff comes under that path. Um, but then the most developed is the church part. Uh, and so building monasteries is pretty, like, big, well-fleshed-out mechanic in the game. I really enjoy it. 
um, the game has this modular building system for uh, some of the buildings, right? You know, you, you don't build houses at all. These get, those get built by your citizens. Um, and some of the buildings are very simple buildings, like let's see this warehouse building. What's this warehouse full of? It's full of wares and common tools. It's a very simple building. You plop it down. It's one piece. Um, but then some things like this fountain and like this uh, monastery are sort of built out of pieces that you snap together. You know, you can sort of see if you look at this, right? Like this is two copies of the same piece here. And these are, you know, the same pieces repeated. But the way that you snap things together, um, I find very satisfying. And I really enjoy the process of making this kind of building. And I'm not great at the landscaping part, but, you know, adding little greeblies and features and stuff like that around it. Um, and it's fun. The monasteries, like I said, are well-developed mechanics. So there's all these different things. So it is truly a complex of buildings. You have the Chapel of St. Hanno over here. And then this is like the nun dorms and they have a refectory down there and there's the monk dorms and they have their refectory down there and in the garden in the middle here there's a well and there's these planters that they tend and there's apiaries where they're making honey and this is a scriptorium where they're copying out manuscripts and like this tower here is actually a treasury so that's increasing how much money i can have and uh this this like walkway around the outside is actually serving a purpose like this is a cloister um and that meets a need that once you promote your novices to be to be uh, brothers or sisters they need to have a cloister to walk in um, or they get unhappy um, you know uh makes perfect sense um this is a this is a hospitium here this bit here so where like visitors come and stay in your town and then they take up all the capacity in your church and then your citizens complain that there's nowhere to go to church because all of the visitors are taking it up so you have to build another church over on the other side of town this is St. Reynolds. I think this was called St. Reynolds of the Field when I first built it. I, this is one of my probably one of my favorite little churches that I've built in this game. So this is, you know, similarly, uh, this is a big complex, right, of snappy pieces doing lots of different uh, purposes. The church building is, is similar, a snappy piece building, but, you know, you're not building different parts to do different purposes. Every part of this is just part of church. Um, but as you progress through the uh, clergy uh, progression tree here, you unlock more bits for your churches, more, you know, you unlock gargoyles and nicer crosses and, you know, different chapels and bell towers and things. Um, and that's a really fun part of the game. There's a purpose to building these churches and there's a purpose to making them bigger, uh, just like there's a purpose to make, you know, mechanical game purpose to having all of these different parts of your monastery complex um you know you don't necessarily have to have them all fit together with a nice walkway around the edge but i like to do that and it looks nice um so yeah that's uh that's our lady of temperance monastery we love it um i'm gonna turn off the no i'm not gonna turn this off but i am gonna dismiss all of these because otherwise i will see them in the corner of my eye and they will annoy me Um, so Broadmeadow initially built up, there was a lot of industry here to build this monastery. There was a lot of, you know, woodworking and stoneworking that went on that's actually gone away over time. I've tried to do some of that. Oh yeah, this is the, uh, the manor house. I've tried to do some amount of like evolving over time, these settlements, like not just expanding, but also having things change within them. Um, which hasn't been super satisfying. I think I'm going to change the way I do things. I'm 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 spent a lot of time thinking about like wanting to do another playthrough that's similar to this, but change some things. And one of the things I want to do is change how I'm renewing things and like I think maybe demolishing and rebuilding some of these small administrative buildings to be a bit more grand later on is one of those things. But maybe also not doing as much of like removing industry because things didn't really like right, there used to be a bunch of industry in this area here and I took it all away and like nothing really sprung up there, even though in some ways it would make sense of like, oh, this is like near this very desirable area where lots of people want to live and near this the entrance to this church and this whole monastery complex, but freeing up that land wasn't enough to make people build houses there. 
I don't know if there's a way I could coax that to happen more. I really don't want to do the thing that a lot of modders have done, which is like, oh, we just changed the game so you could build houses and roads now. Um, there's lots of mods that do that that I've seen, and that makes me un does make me unhappy. I'm not trying to say other people can't play this game that way. That's not what I want to do, but I wonder if there's a way that I can solve that problem for myself. Anyway, um, this is Broad Meadow. This starts out as being halfway between, you know, the lakeside settlements that I'm imagining to be in this prehistory of this site and this hilltop settlement that I'm imagining to be in the prehistory of this site. And then the next major thing that determined where I was expanding to was the road out of town. So I had this road connecting the hilltop to the lake <coughs> that I started building around. Um, and once you get bigger, you start attracting immigrants to your, your settlement and you also start attracting trade, and they all enter the map in the same place and have to navigate to your existing settlement, and so they build a road, and then once that road has been built, more people follow it, so it stays there. Um, and the road out of town, I think there's a signpost, yes. So here's the, the, the junction here, outside the Angler's Walk, you can either carry on down this way and go to the lake, or you could turn, th whoop, whoop, turn this way and head out of town, and you go out through here, uh, past sort of some of the more recent industrial buildup. This is uh, this is tin market here, and some of my charcoal and iron production here. It's sort of midway between my two iron mines, so I decided to build my iron production here. Um, but yeah, the road out of town goes through here, and we get up to Farden Toll, um, the next little town that I built because it was sort of the next interesting spot on the road out of town right this is the road that led all the way out to the edge of the map and where all my immigrants were coming from which i decided was the northbury road northbury is one of the other towns you can trade with um as you uh to get more resources early on in the game that you might not have access to and make money later on in the game uh and so i always like to name one of the roads you know, think of one of the roads as being, oh, it's the Northbury Road, because it's the road that goes to Northbury, so this is Northbury Road Market. This is far and toll, you know, and a, a, a little toll idea of, like, a toll road, right? You're coming towards the more built-up area, right? You're coming onto the edge of, of Broad Meadow and getting up towards the, the county seat up at uh, Stiffick Hill there, and so there's a toll on the road here to make sure that, you know, all of the taxes and levies are being paid by the people who are coming and going. Um, and yeah, this is a little like mining town is the uh, the reason that this town is here. We have iron being mined out of the hillside here, um, and also a little bit of agriculture. This was another spot where there was like an open open field, so I have some cattle farm here. I don't like how the cattle farming looks in this game aesthetically, but you know, it is what it is. So I really enjoy that this is the road out of town and that, that you, you know have settlements coming up appearing you coax settlements into life along the road into town in a fun way um but the road out of town changed on the way out of town this was like the last junction on the road out of town and so i built a little pub and church here this is the pilgrim's rest this is the pub the church here is called st bleeds i know that's not how you actually pronounce that but in this world, this fictional world, it is. Um, and this is my favorite, like, tiny little church that I've built. Uh, St. Pleiades, I really like it. It's just, like, three, three, four parts, I think. It's super small. Like, I was trying to build, you know, the smallest church that I could build and still have it look cute and churchy. Um, but, yeah, the road out of town used to continue. It used to go this way. Um, skirt around these woods here and head on off to the edge of the map over there. Um, but it doesn't anymore because uh, after this sort of initial expansion here, uh, an expansion down and along, following along this road, we had a boom town. Uh, this is the town of St. Nell's over here named after its church um, because there's gold. There's gold over here and there's gold over here. And so in between the gold and the gold, we had a little boom town that I sort of tried to imagine as, as a town that was built up very quickly so it's all quite compressed together this was all a very heavily fo forested area 
before this town was here. And it's all I would cut down, which I kind of regret. I don't think it looks as nice as it did. But so this town being very sort of compressed in here uh, is, a, is a factor of that. And, you know, the idea that this this little town is called St. Nell's because it, like, um, was built so quickly as this, like, gold rush town that it didn't even really have a name until it was already big enough that there was a church there. And so the, uh, the church name becomes the name of the town. Um, I have a little jeweler in the middle here and some gold smelting going on uh, in this town. I really like the market that I built here. I think it's really cute as well. The markets have a little bit of that modular building system going on where you're snapping things together, making it look pretty. Um, oh yeah, there's another building that I made that I really like here. This is the um, the tax that you sort of have uh, incentivized to build, uh, have a tax inspector to collect taxes. Um, in every town and so this one I decided the other ones I've sort of styled as like oh it's the court or it's the manor this one is the office of the inspector of mines and I really just like you know bu the building a, a small big building here for a, for a local bureaucrat I quite like I imagine the uh, the inspector of mines is very proud of uh, of this architectural master that they uh, they work from there they go oh, there they are let's 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 check in on my inspector of mines here Ernest swift leg i have a mod installed that gives different names uh to or gives more more randomness uh, more options for the names and gives them these little nicknames um so this guy's Ernest swift leg tax collector level one works 34 meters from home um so yeah this little boom town built up here uh as i was saying um around these gold mines and it became so populous that it actually diverted the road into town here's the road coming in on the edge of the map and it used to come out of the woods here and then head off in this direction as i was saying work its way around here and then get to some bleeds uh, and then continue on through Fard and toll and into broad meadow and then up the hill to stiffock um, but now it doesn't do that anymore uh, the gravity of this this boom town of St. Nell's is such that now um, the the route into town is actually very circuitous because you come in and you work your way through St. Nell's and through the sort of cramped in. There's no easy way through the middle of this town. You got to weave your way around stuff, and then all these wiggly wiggly roads. We can see some traders coming into town on this road here. And then you get up to the lake, and you got to go all the way around the lake. Uh, up past this little fisherman's hut and then get onto the road that was originally here from that uh, connection between the lake and the hill back in the old days. So that's now like the main road from the next town over to my county goes through that way. And so I really like that that changed. That was something that I ever planned for, ever intended to happen, but that changed. And then this little town also is sort of on the road in between the boom town and some of the older towns, I think this is called, yeah, Brewerton, because there's brewers here. Not my most inventive name. Um, what else did I want to, to show? What's the net? Oh, yeah, the final sort of thing that I built in the story, the final thing to arrive in the story of this little county is St. Rolfer's Abbey. This huge monastic complex over here. As I said, that part of the game is the most fleshed out mechanically. Um, and... I really love, I think, you know, I was saying this game has some interesting things going on mechanically with the way that roads and housing work. Um, the other thing that I think is a huge, huge strength of this game is uh, the the art assets. I think it's a thing that's really under underrated um, in a lot of games, especially in city builders, is, is how good the assets are. And, like, you're building these complexes out of these pieces that you're slotting together uh, and they look so good they're so like detailed and lovingly made and they all like fit together so well and like they make such a, they have such a good coherent style and even while they're being built the like they've taken so much care to model when you see like this you know structure half built you see all the like wooden frame inside of it and the level of detail of like the more advanced structures have like this more intricate internal structure of like beams and you know higher quality timber and stuff like i was really impressed with the quality of the art assets for all the buildings in this game and i think it's really awesome that they were uh, so 
thoughtful about that side of it and it really shows so yeah this is like the last big thing that i built in this game before sort of deciding that i'm going to pause it and start my next one uh so church of st aliash the great it's my big big cathedral uh with uh, big stained glass windows at the front and the back which i'm very proud of i also really like this pub here the bellmaker's arms uh the nice like balcony facing out onto the lake I think it's cute. The pub stuff, there's not as many cute parts to make pubs from as there are fun bits to make abbeys from. Um, but not a bad pub. Um, this town sort of sp did spring up around the abbey in a, in a fun way. I managed to make that work by, uh, you know, having a little market here and, like, building some, like, stone cutters. We'll see some of that later. But, yeah, much bigger, grander. You know, I like the, uh, the monastery across the lake here, Our Lady of Temperance, the much earlier more humble monastery over here and then the big grand edifice of st rolfers over here but it's mostly a lot of the same same stuff just in different different shapes but more grander uh more grander so here's a nice big hospitium to host lots more guests and a lovely garden here i'm not very good at doing the gardens but you can sort of see it i built a massive refectory uh can have a hundred and fifty i think people can come and eat here at once or something like that um, but there's only one person whose job it is to bring food here so actually if instead of connecting all of these pieces together and to make one big refectory i had made each individual piece of this its own smaller refectory this would have worked out better for this abbey um, i also have this kitchen here which has the opposite problem this kitchen is much too big uh, i should have made some of these pieces decorative and not functional because i don't need 12 cooks to support this monastery anyway i like my uh, my monk dorms and nun dorms here as well nice big scriptorium this tower is just purely decorative this cloister was actually too big i had to add this arm across the middle here because the game's like uh i don't know the 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 mechanic for for building monasteries was like no this cloister is too big you can't this isn't a, a valid cloister for our definition of what a cloister is but yeah, I'm very happy with this. I loved designing it and building it, um, and I love how well it works. I love seeing, you know, the little monks walking around, and the fact that they actually walk along the cloisters and the galleries is really fun. And, you know, they also have their vineyards out here, and they're making wine like monks do. Uh, and then there's, like, this other little town that built up out back because I needed so much stone to build this that I put in some more little stone cutters out back, and so there's the little back abbey market and stuff out here and little hunters out the back it's cute um so that is st rolfer's abbey and that's sort of the last that's sort of the end of the story of this this place you know in the, the time you know imagining these these settlements springing up one by one or sort of gradually growing from being very small and humble into being bigger places over time and you know different major constructions happening like a big church over here well you know lots of big churches basically because that's the thing that has the most detail in this game is building big churches but you can also build big uh big civic halls as well i haven't done as much of that and you can build pubs i'd love to build a pub um you can also build forts i do have a fort here what's this fort called fort overden uh overden um as i said that part that part of the tech tree is the least well fleshed out so far so there isn't that much stuff to do with forts that said i've done the minimum amount i could have done a lot more with this fort i still kind of like it i like that it's up on this escarpment overlooking the town but it's sort of a bitch to get to you have to go this huge long back road to get there uh um and i think playing again i'm going to do a bit more fort stuff very early on one of the mechanics in this game that i think i don't like is that progression in these trees is like competitive that getting a better rating from the labor faction or the clergy faction which you need to do to unlock more things in the labor tree or the clergy tree has the side effect of decreasing your rating with the kingdom faction and you can overcome that but if you fall behind it can be tricky to dig yourself out and i haven't really dug myself out in this um but yeah, that's the county of Strithuk. That's my little little medieval county that I've built and that sort of runs decently well. You know, I have a lot of 
things up here that would, might concern you if you're trying to build the economy of this to run as smoothly as possible. But you kind of don't need to run the economy as smoothly as possible in this. Um, this game is more focused on making cute little towns, I think, than on having some like robust and interesting and challenging economic simulation. Um, some of the things, in fact, that irritate me about the game are some of the aspects of the economic situation uh, simulation that don't feel all that well balanced and i'm playing with a few mods to try and address some of that i think some of them go too far the mod that i'm playing with like i think increases the yield of wheat farms by a factor of 12 which is too much but it was really annoying to be constantly finding that i'd never had enough wheat farms uh in the game before and that my bakers were always complaining about not having enough flour so i sort of tried to change that um but yeah, overall, I think that the way that you can collaborate with the mechanics of this game to tell stories about places is really fun. I really like making little towns and making little churches and giving little names to little churches and thinking about the little stories of the little people going to little churches. And then it's really fun. Um, but yeah, I like I said, I think I'm going to you know play another playthrough and do things a little differently and see if it comes out a little bit more how i want it to um i'm gonna try tweaking the economy stuff a little bit more with some more mods I might try a mod that adds some more house models i don't love the thatched houses having said i really like the art assets in this in this game i don't like their like thatched roof look um all that much uh and I want I would like a bit more variety in the houses but yeah I'm gonna try and do some things to make my towns a little more dense and grow in a little more different ways I'm gonna try and have a lot more smaller towns a lot more smaller markets a lot less of like centralized you know like here's all my spot that makes all of the wool and all of the clothing for the whole county like less of that more like duplicated stuff I'm gonna worry less about the economy actually functioning like smoothly and efficiently and just be like okay my economy is going to be a shambles and there's going to be a lot of duplicated production but more about trying to get the look that i want i'm going to change i'm doing the housing so like you don't if you if houses are near things that produce you know a pollution effect as it were an undesirability effect so you know this sawmill has an undesirability aura these mines have this aura of undesirability um and you can prevent houses from being built in that aura by excluding it from the painted zone in which you are allowed to build your your uh, people are free to build houses i think i'm going to stop doing that i think i'm going to let people build houses in undesirable areas if they want to i'm going to try and demolish things more and try and make things more dense by just building right in the middle of things where there's already stuff instead of like oh i'm gonna find a nice you know open space like over here i was like i'm gonna find a nice open space on the edge of town because i was so annoyed that all the people kept complaining that there was no space left at the chapel of st hanno's to go to mass because of all the people who were staying at the hospitium and i was like well there's this church over here why don't you go there to st reynolds but then i guess i was figuring out that this church was also full St. Dorothy's, so I was like, I'll build another church, and you build St. Delassa's out here on a nice open spot of land, and it is kind of out, feels weird to have this large church and nothing around it. I should have just built this in the middle, right? I should have been like, no, fuck your houses. We're building a church right in the middle, and then that'll push that housing, you know, out to the edge of that area, and I think that might produce more of the kind of growth that is going to be like make the cities look cute the way i want them to look cute or make the villages look cute the way i want them to look cute similarly with the pubs right like this pub i built here because i wanted to have a pub over an important with a bridge over an important road and this road ended up not being that important and this pub is also out in the middle of nowhere now in a way that doesn't really make sense for for how it looks so i you know would rather i just like smashed it down in the middle of things done more smashing things down into the middle of stuff really cramming stuff in tightly um i think that's gonna be fun i'm gonna try a river map i'm gonna try i'm gonna try putting more doing more of this putting more hedges and walls and stuff along the side of roads not to like force roads to be in certain places but to like hold roads in place once they exist I think it gets a little too sprawly and chaotic with the roads sometimes and spider webby and some of it is like okay i want to enforce some order in some ways i don't know it's gonna be tricky anyway i'm gonna stop talking and recording and streaming now but uh this is foundation this is 
the little county, the little set of villages that I made in Foundation. And maybe I'll make another video about the next little one that I make. Who knows? We'll see.